Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Reaper 5.965 is out, and Reaper 6 doesn't seem any closer. They keep adding a decimal point. But anyways, it's, uh, it's cool that they are continually and frequently giving us updates, lots of bug fixes, new features, all that kind of stuff. Before we get started, I want to let you know that all the courses and the web remote builder are on sale again. Uh, the last time we, these were on sale was a month ago during Black Friday. This is the last sale of the year. All the mixing courses are $19 each instead of $30, and you can buy the bundle for $57 instead of $90. Reaper Web Remote Builder is $8 instead of $12. These are on sale until December 26th at mixingandreaper.com or reaperblog.net slash courses. So yeah, so just wanted to let you guys know about that. The first one I want to show you is for MIDI Learn. There's a new option. Optionally, only respond to Learn while effect configuration is visible. And so that just means if the plugin UI is visible, it will respond to the learned MIDI controls. And if it's hidden, then you, it won't start automating. We'll take the gain of band 3, wiggle that, go to parameter, and I'm going to click on Learn. And I'm just going to turn a knob here. And I make sure that this third option, this is the new one, enable only when effect configuration is visible. So I'm going to take that. And so I'm turning the knob on my MIDI controller. Let's bring this down to like zero right there. I'm going to hide this plugin window. I'm going to turn the knob a couple times. And let's bring back re-EQ. And it hasn't moved at all. Uh, it's only going to respond to the controller while it's visible. I'll just grab in another thing, like I'll grab in Recomp and put that on here. And let's say that the, uh, I don't know, the ratio is also going to be linked to the same parameter. So MIDI Learn, move that knob. And OK, so when I'm looking at Recomp, I can move that knob and the ratio changes. And I go to Re-EQ, and I can turn the same knob, and that changes. I can pop out both windows like this. And while they're both visible, they can both move. So the way that differs from the other option, and I'll just show you that now, enable only when effect configuration is focused. The way that's different is that only the plugin that is focused where, you know, it, the this one here is white background, this one's gray, it's the focused window. Um, I would need to do that for both of these. So set those to that. If I have both of these on focused, then when I click on the re-EQ window, that's, up, that's focused. When I click on the recomp window, that's focused. When I click on to the arrange view, neither of them will respond. So if you want to have those plugin windows visible and you want to be able to do other things, and you only want to write automation while these are visible, then this new option, uh, only when effect configuration is visible, is a great way of doing it. And I think, going forward, that's the way that I'm going to uh, do all of these sorts of uh, automation things. So even if I'm doing other stuff with a mouse at the same time, I can still automate uh, that visible plugin. And if I'm in another track or another window, something like that, and I uh, come back, this isn't going to be changed. I can use a small number of knobs on my controller and get a lot more use out of them by not having to use a separate knob for each plugin and each parameter. I can kind of use one knob almost for everything. So I think that's pretty great. And let's move on to the next thing. Up next is a change for the MIDI editor. Select all only selects notes within the editable part of a trimmed media item. So we're going to put in an empty media item. We'll make it two bars. Double click to open up the editor. I'm going to insert an arpeggio like that. Two bar arpeggio. Let's say I only want the first half of it. I'll trim it in the arrange view. I'll 
select all and copy and then make a new item and and paste that in it's only copied the first couple notes first four notes not all of the notes command a or select all function is not going to select items that are notes or MIDI data that are not visible um, inside that item. So I think it makes sense, um, kind of an edge case sort of situation where that actually makes any difference at all. But um, but yeah, it makes sense. It's good to have. Let's move on. Up next is a change to the MP3 decoder. We can now see the source file channel count in source properties. We can see if this has two channels and if it's joint stereo, split stereo, or other stereo mode in, um, in the MP3 properties. I'm not sure if I import these, if I'll get any sort of different uh, things in here. Uh, they're all saying like two channel joint stereo. But anyways, it can detect the channel number and mode. If we look in the render to file window and set our output format to MP3, we now see a new option here, do not allow joint stereo. So the difference between joint stereo and normal stereo is the way that it processes uh, stereo information, I guess. If we have it on joint stereo, it's basically doing a mid-side type of encoding. It takes whatever is common and encodes that in a certain way, and that whatever is different gets encoded in a different way, rather than um, using the same encoding for the left and right. It's a way that MP3s can save space, but it does affect the actual sound quality. So um, if you prefer not having joint stereo, um, you can enable that option. There's also this option, write replay gain tag. And this is not the replay gain tag that is more most commonly used. This is the lame uh, replay gain tag. It's supported by a few things, but not universally. So like uh, iTunes uh, won't read this, um, and a lot of other players won't. It's only in the special lame MP3 tags, not the ID3 tags. Uh, this was just added for consistency with the MP3 encoding uh, in command line. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not really going to affect anything um, unless it does. In general, I would just ignore that, um, but I thought I should mention it at least. Here's something new that affects Rescript. The IDE can now duplicate the selected text or the current line via control D or command D. So uh, this will affect any scripting window. So the, um, the JS development environment or inside the video plugin or inside of uh, any of the script windows. You can, uh, let's just take this word change log, I'll press command D and it duplicates that. Scripting often involves a lot of repetitive code. And so that's something that is simple, but is gonna save people a lot of time. Going back to the render window, we can use wildcards for bit depth. So if I render this time selection and I've got my bit depth set to 24 bit, it's going to use the number 24 in that uh, file name. We can now use character substitutions in wildcard naming. So I've got a region here called My Epic Song. There's spaces in it. So region is the wildcard we're using for the name. If we go down to wildcards, and unfortunately it's cut off in my screen capture, but trust me, right below here, it says wildcard help. And then this window pops up and there is some text here about the um, wildcard substitutions. So I'll just read that out. Immediately following a wildcard, character replacement statement may be specified. 
So uh, angle bracket X, angle bracket, single character which is to be removed from the substitution. For example, dollar sign track, angle bracket, space, angle bracket, removes all spaces from the track name. So let's try that out. Let's uh, replace all of the spaces with a period. So I'm going to open the angle bracket, put in a space, press a period, and then and then close the bracket. Now it's my.epic.song.wave. So we could also change that to a hyphen like that, or an underscore, or by having nothing else, just that one space in there, we can remove the spaces. And those are probably the most common uses for that. When we're rendering and we're using the silently increment file names to avoid overriding option, and there's a lot of items in our project and we're exporting them all at once in a batch, we can now render up to 10,000 alternate file names. If we go to the actions list and search for the theme development show theme tweak configuration window, see that the filter is now back. This went away when Reaper 5 came out. This window got moved into the action list or separate uh, from the preferences window. And uh, this filter went away along with that. So we got it back now, finally. We can do things like um, if we search for transport, we can filter this list for transport functions or background. And all these background colors are there. We can search for text, and all of our text colors are here. So much easier to do this than to scroll through this huge list of different colors and text and all that kind of stuff. So that's really nice to have. Along with that, some things have been fixed along with themes uh, for redrawing the various windows on theme changes. So it used to be that when you go and switch themes, uh, there was a couple areas that wouldn't get updated with the correct colors or settings and things like that until you restart Reaper. It kind of rarely popped up, but it is fixed now. I think it was in the last update, we got a blur preset for the video processor. Now this has changed to blur low quality. I think it's a little more optimized in this update, but yeah, so everything I talked about the last time still applies to that, but now we have this blur Gaussian. And so this is a different type of, of blur, different way of doing a blur. So we can make this super blurry. It's going to look a lot better than the other one, but also it's going to take a lot more CPU. Uh, you may not be able to preview it in real time, that sort of thing. But uh, let's, let's just experiment with it paused and so the sigma control makes this go super blurry but it is quite a nice soft blur it's it's very blurry obviously um, but it is a nicer effect than the blur low quality option i think really the main difference is that when you blur it it doesn't uh get kind of muddy colors The difference there with extreme settings, this is just completely like gray and the Gaussian blur at extreme settings. It still sort of has the same colors there. Uh, and then we can kind of stretch the, uh, the image as well. Kind of interesting. And again, we can, we can change the direction of the blur, make it so that it's only a downward blur. And when you're automating stuff that is moving downward, you might want to have that option. So there's a lot more stuff in the change log. It's actually a really big change log for this update. Lots of little bug fixes and minor changes. But overall, this is a really good update, and I would recommend it to everyone. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've missed any of these update videos, I try to get a video out for every update, but it's not always possible, or there's not always uh, a lot of interesting things to show. 
but you can check out a playlist of all those update videos to catch up on all the new features that have come out since Reaper 5. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs> <laughs>